That's pretty cool. Looks like his mother actually does care. So that opening cutscene didn't really seem like it. Anyway, my name is Visor. Welcome to episode 10 of Let's Play Bully. Today is Christmas, and the episode's gonna be a little weird for several reasons. We're probably gonna show off a lot of errands because, well, this is a good time to do it. Like this one right here. I wonder what it's I want to go in the toilet, but I'm afraid I'll get caught. <laughs> You're not afraid of getting caught, are you? Alright, so this is simple enough. We're going to take a firecracker and throw it in a toilet. And this is actually not something special for this errand. Really, there are no special mechanics for any of the errands. They're basically things you can already do in the game. So really, even if I wasn't doing this errand, I could always run in and I throw another firecracker in there. the reason I don't do it is because there's really no point. It doesn't even bother people because usually the toilet's empty. So it's kind of too minor to even bother with. Anyway, we're gonna go and see that present now. Hello, miss. Oh, there you are, Jimmy. I'll make this quick. Your mom has sent you a Christmas present. Just great. I know. You are very lucky your mom is so nice. You may go now. Oh, it's a Christmas sweater. Looks like a reindeer is on it. I think the nose lights up. And uh, this shirt is very, very special because it makes all the other students laugh at you. Yeah. In fact, it's so special that the normal students that would kiss you, they won't even give you the option anymore. How you doing? Greetings and salutations. Sup? I think you're very strong. You wouldn't hurt me. Yeah, that Sheldon, he doesn't do anything for you anymore. Oh look, there's Angie. Do you maybe want to go out sometime? Oh, he ignored. Can I Total cold shoulder. <laughs> yeah, so she won't do anything with you. And there actually is one student that will kiss you. It's Eunice. But uh, you gotta find her. That's not always so easy. And, well, I guess she wouldn't be in here. I think sure that's the boys' bathroom. Anyway, we can't find her, so we're gonna move on. So the first thing we're going to do today is head to the town of New Coventry. I always get my it's actually an area that opened up at the beginning of Chapter 3, and it's to the east of the town of Bulworth. So we're just going to head on right over. Now instead of going around the school like I normally do, I'm going to cut through the middle of the school. Because this BMX bike is pretty cool Come because on, it can take all the shortcuts. It's not the only BMX bike that can do it, but it is the easiest to use. It's a lot of fun overall. Which is why I'm going to be very sad when we take shop 5 and replace this bike. It's unfortunate, but I gotta show all the classes, right? That. Anyway, I'm also showing off an alternative bike path into the town of Bulworth, as opposed to taking the big bridge we normally go through. And over here on the right side, down this road right here, is the path to New Coventry, right beyond this bridge right here. Now, if you look around New Coventry, there's a few things you'll probably notice. It's not a very good area of town to begin with. A lot of the shops are boarded up, and there's a lot of greasers hanging out here. But before I dismiss the place some more, let's start the next mission. Hey, 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 kid! You got a light? No! Okay, then you wanna sit on my knee? You wanna kick in the balls? Uh, I'm sorry, kid. I'm just a little down on my luck. I mean, one year, I'm living in Greenland with a posse of elves and some talking reindeer. <laughs> and the next, I'm getting treated like a drunken fool, thrown out of the North Pole and put to <laughs> work in a dump of a town like this. Okay, man, now you're kind of creeping me out. Why, why, why does everyone say that to me? Whoa, I can't imagine. I mean, the other kids was just abusing me, calling me a pervert, throwing snowballs at me. You're just like them, little red-haired bully. Hold on, which kids? Those ones over there, the tough kids, damn it. Not the rich kids from the fancy school like you. The Molly Connolly and Ravis boys like you. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> they keep attacking me, man. I can't take it no more. What happens in the old days? I miss 
Prancer. Oh, what? He was always my favorite. Not Rudolph. No. He was the prima donna. Oh. <laughs> I'm falling apart here. Hey, listen, man. Where are these kids? Oh, they're somewhere. All right, so we're gonna go get some snowballs and attack Rudy's attackers. Rudy, by the way, is the fake Santa over there. He's not the same hobo as the one that teaches you fighting. They do look pretty similar, but they're definitely different. Nail that little puke over there! Now, overall, this mission's pretty easy. The aiming's pretty much auto-compensated, as in you put the reticle on the target and you throw at the right time. It'll throw the snowball and compensate for the movement of the target, as well as the distance. And it usually hits. But occasionally it'll whiff if the target stops moving. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. If you only played the PS2 version of Bully, you've never seen this. Because this mission is only in Bully Scholarship Edition, as well as Rudy the Fake Santa. In total, there are four new story missions in Chapter 3 that you have to do before you start the missions with the Greasers. These guys, by the way, are not Greasers. They're actually a different clique called the Townies. And they don't go to the school, but they're usually related to the school in some way. You got him! Oh, we're done. Oops, didn't even notice. Hey! Whoa, oh. hey, easy! Oh. Thanks, man. You're all right. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh whoa! Well, good luck with those reindeer, you maniac. Alright, so we made 20 bucks from a hobo. Not sure why he had 20 bucks. And we got some ridiculous looking reindeer antlers. I mean, just look at them. Ugh. Anyway, so like I said earlier, we're going to be doing a lot of errands today because, you know, spirit of Christmas and all that. Plus, we're short on missions. So there should be one right over here. Hey kiddo, wanna help me out here? My old lady is cheating on me. Can you get me some pics so she won't take half when I divorce her? Sounds good. Thanks. That's kind of weird. That doesn't really match the objective marker. The objective says we're taking a photo of a cheating girlfriend. The dude clearly said divorce, so they should be married. Probably they decided they don't want to deal with extramarital affairs in this game. Anyway, this asshole stealing my bike. Yeah, so the other characters in this game can steal your bike, which is an issue, because uh, you have to go chase it down again. Or you have to go back to the garage. Come on, hero. But we gotta take this picture real quick. And these guys are going to make it a little complicated. Come on. Nope, not close enough. And... Come on. I almost had that, that time. Yeah, yeah, walk tall. I get it. I know that movie reference. Stop it now. <sighs> the shot, and they're ruining it. I'm not actually sure if the cheating couple will leave if I take too long. But that's why I'm trying to get the picture now, as opposed to fighting. Come on, hero. And now, we can kick all of their asses. Look, the bullies are joining in, trying to help us, which is pretty cool. One of the advantages of being friends with, uh, Russell. Downside is, I don't think the bullies are actually very good at fighting. If you look at their fight combo, it's a lot less effective than, say, the preppies or the greasers. In fact, that's probably why they can only pick on the nerds and the non-affiliated kids, because they don't fight. But that's pretty much what bullies are, right? Pick on the weaker students. It was a tiger, not a crane. Yeah, that one bully's really kind of weird. He's always talking about tigers and cranes. I think he thinks he knows Kung Fu. Maybe he thinks he's Bruce Leroy. Anyway, we're gonna head back to the construction worker, now that we have the picture. I'm not sure what his relationship is with that lady, but uh... Whatever. We got him his stuff, and we're gonna get our reward. Easy enough, right? Oh, nice roll. Here you go. Thanks, kid. You're all right. All right, 25 bucks. I used to skip school anyway, now we're just gonna wander the town and see what we can find. I need help. Of course, I'll show off the interesting parts. All right, up here on this roof, we got an errand with the townie. Let's see what he got for us. Let's have some fun with these water balloons. See how many people you can hit with them, okay? Okay, I'm in. Thanks. All right, this errand's actually very hard to do, right? So water balloons, unlike the snowball mission, do not auto-compensate when you aim directly at the target. 
However, if you try to lock on, it doesn't really work much better. So we're gonna have to throw a bunch of them and just hit them just right, compensating for movement and distance, all of that stuff on our own. And sometimes there aren't any close targets, so you gotta go for the long balls. Ah, that one went right over his head. That's unfortunate. Let's do another one. And now they start spinning, and I really hate that because I have a hard time judging when to throw it. They start like doing a figure eight standing still. That, was a, that one was a lot easier though. Two guys standing next to each other walking a straight line. Good stuff. Now, since all these things are adults, you're of course getting in trouble very quickly. Yeah, generally on this street, you only see adults walking around. Nice. Now, you do have another possible target for the water balloon. One that won't get you in trouble and is very easy to hit. It's basically the guy that gave you the mission. You can throw water balloons at him, you can throw all three water balloons at him, and you can pass this mission and get the water balloons. Now that we have water balloons and any sort of faucet, sink, or water fountain, we can make new water balloons. They're not terribly useful, they're just sort of a prank item that don't do much, but they are available now if you want to use them. Alright, here's a fast food restaurant, and there should be an area near here. Because I accepted it before, but failed it. I got a job that only you can help me out with. All right, so this guy wants us to do some food delivery for him. No big deal. Except he won't let us go dressed like this. Instead, we gotta go dressed up like this. This is actually the errand where I got the costume from. But I failed it, and they let me still keep the costume. So that's pretty cool. So let's see what this mission's about. All you gotta do is make three deliveries. So you just look on your mini map, go to each target. And give him Here the food. Yeah, it's not very hard, but I just wanted to show you a different type of mission. One that gives you an outfit up front. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go see to the rest of the deliveries, and then we're gonna do another errand after that. Alright, here on this pier is another errand. It's a very special one. I will show you as soon as I trigger it. Ah, there he is. There's a treasure on those islands by the pirate ship. Why don't you go check it out? Sounds stupid. Okay. Oh, thanks. All right. So we gotta go to some island, check it out. The problem is you gotta swim there. And swimming this game is doable. It's just, there's nothing really interesting about it. You spam A and you swim faster. That's about it. Now, you also, your clothes will get wet, so when you get out of the water, you'll see little droplets effects on them. But overall, it's not a big deal. It doesn't affect anything, it doesn't change anything. It's just a nice little touch. And for this mission, you gotta swim all the way around this island. Alright, you see that yellow mark over there? That's our goal. So to get over there, we're gonna go take a left, right here, and on to the beach. Now, for this errand, you can actually get multiple objectives. Sometimes you're supposed to go to the last island, sometimes you're actually supposed to explore the pirate ship. This time we're doing the island. And you'll notice that you got this sort of weird balancing beam thing going on. Again, this is not a special mechanic for any errand. This is an actual mechanic that's used in other places in the game. Just not very often for some reason. Anyway, we're almost there. One more plank and we should be able to get to the... Come on, get up. One more plank, and we should be able to get to the target. All right, all right. Now this is There's also cool. a rubber band here, Another one but that's not all. What I really want to show off is a little secret over here. If you swim toward the pirate ship, you'll notice that to the left of it, there is a beach. Now there's things on the pirate ship as well. There's a G&G &G card. What's special is on the beach. Check it out. There's somebody here. Who is it? Why are you it's a weird pirate. With that thing? And he'll attack you. For no apparent reason. Someone else kick his ass. And he's also not holding a sword. He's actually holding a yardstick. That's probably because it's the only weapon that has a thrust motion to it. Most of the other weapons are just for smacking people around. And cool. Now we have the secret. We unlocked ourselves a pirate hat. Cool. Anyway, moving on. Alright, here I am at the carnival. 
Now one of the coolest activities is the go-kart races. Now there are actually five levels, but I'm only gonna show the fifth race because why show the other ones? This race is the hardest anyway. Now the fifth race, you're gonna be racing against greasers. The other races were against the other clicks, like bullies, the nerds, the jocks. Another difference between these races is the number of racers, track layout, as well as how many laps you have to do. The early races were much easier, and you only went against three opponents, and you only did three laps. This final race, you go against five racers, including a girl named Lola, and do four laps. For the most part, the racing is pretty straightforward. You accelerate, you brake, and sometimes you do a power slide. You don't really need to use the brakes or power sliding until race three. But after that, there are definitely turns you have to use those techniques to do well. Generally, you don't want to bump the other racers, because while it might mess up the other person, you'll also lose a bit of speed. And if you lose speed, the other racers might catch up and get tangled up with you. I definitely had one racer T-bone me over and over. I'm not sure if the AI is programmed to be assholes, but sometimes it sure feels like it. But just like the bike races, usually pretty easy to catch up. Still, I find these go-kart races much more challenging than the bike races overall. Also, the music for the races is pretty good as well. Really like it. I might shut up for a while just so you can hear it. See, this one's a jackass. He keeps like hitting my rear tire. It's totally fucked me up. And, uh, recover. Oh, here is the part that you have to power slide. And I didn't even do it right this time. It's like, guy keep fucking hitting me in the back tire. Jackass. I mean, for most of these turns, I find it's easier to take it on the corner, and take a sharp corner, because that way you stay out of the path of the other AI racers. They can't fuck you up as much. Overall, these go-karts are pretty cool, I kind of wish I could win one, and be able to use it all over town. Alright, we're almost at the finish line now. So what do you think the reward for this fifth race is? Nope, it's not a go-kart. Instead, you unlock more races in this city. Eventually, you will be able to get that go-kart, but not now. All sorted. Anyway, we're gonna go do some other activities. Technically, the town races are open to me at the moment, but I've done enough racing for today. Plus, the mission that I've been waiting for just opened up. Alright, we're almost at the mission. Which, by the way, also contains Rudy the Fake Santa, which also means it's another Bully Scholarship-only mission. Anyway, let's get started. Kid, it's me. Remember me? Oh, great! It's the crazy lunatic. What was that? Oh, nothing, Mister. Hey, I'm you know Santa Claus, oh. right? Oh, yeah, right, Santa Claus. How could I forget? We met a few times when you crept into my bedroom when I was asleep as a kid. Then only more recently when you were drunk under a bridge. You're right, man. How could I forget a fine role model like you? Ho ho! Now listen up. There's an imposter going around claiming he's me. He's ripping people off by posing for Santa pictures and charging for it. That's my money! If you take care of this imposter, then I can take what's rightfully mine and cut you in on the action. Of course. What do you say? Well, I wasn't expecting much in my stocking this year. So why not? That's a spirit! Alright, so we're gonna go to the town square, where they have all this stuff set up. See the big tree, the castle. 
and the Santa set up. So this should be fun, right? And there's something weird about this, that I'm destroying the whole place while wearing that nice uh, reindeer sweater. You know what? We're just gonna keep bashing everything. Now we could fight the elves or fight Santa, but there's not really a big reason to. Yeah, I can hit him, but uh, that doesn't help you get through the objective fast enough. They don't really stop you anyway. We got another bat. We keep smashing. And you can hit sand like that. And it's supposed to get the police involved. But for some reason, they'll get really close to you and then not do anything. It's really bizarre. Anyway, we gotta hit these big castle facades now. The hitbox on them is a little weird though. Like if you hit them for the wrong angle, it doesn't work. You know, let's get another bat. There's one right over here. Right over. Come on, pick it up. There we go. Yeah, we gotta hit the other one. See, here comes the cops again, and then he just stops. Don't know why. Whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna even hit him with the bat. Anyway, back to the facade. We're almost done here. Come on. This is what I mean by weird hitboxes. There we go, found it. Nice. Look at that. He dresses an elf now. Because that's what everyone wants, right? Anyway, that's that. My work here is done. Cool. So this has been a pretty eventful Christmas. We did some good, we did some bad. I think we overall did more good than bad though. So that's pretty much it for this episode. Next episode is going to be a normal school day. Until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time.